So another thing, of course, is uh, when we're establishing a session, let's just make sure we're out of it. Good we are. OK, one of the things that we could do is we could bring in the minus V option here at the end. Minus V. Um, and then what that will do is it will turn debugging on, so you get debug output as a result. So you can actually see here's the full exchange in terms of actually getting that right. So you can see it actually goes down through the various stages of trying and then effectively find something that you can actually use in terms of to secure that connection and we're in. So it's worth actually having a, having one of these as a backstop because then if it, something fails you can actually look at this and see which stage it's probably failed at um, which is always very very useful as far as, the, as far as debugging is concerned. Don't forget you've got the man on SSH um, and you can actually have a look down through here, oops, so you can see what we've got. In fact, let's use the old spacebar. Um, very interesting read um, in terms of just seeing how it sort of effectively all sort of works. And then this bit here on authentication is the bit that I was actually going to. So it actually describes here in a bit of detail the difference between the different protocols, whether it's protocol 1 or protocol 2. So essentially, uh, Protocol 2 is the one that you should be using. So you can see as it's here, it's protocol 1 should not be used as it only offers support for legacy devices. So as it says, there are a number of cryptographic weaknesses. So basically it's saying don't use it. And, and by default, it's set to protocol version 2 anyway. So so there's no need to go and do that. And then it goes through the authentication, then talks about public keys, private keys, and the exchanges of those, which is all very useful, and the use of the authorized keys folder, uh, file, sorry, that we got in the SSH, uh, or dot .SSH folder. So that's all really, really good stuff. Control Z to get out of there. So that can be run, of course, anywhere. And of course, you can also do that through your browser and just do a man SSH and you'll see all the necessary bits there as well. Right, good. Um, that's pretty much where I wanted to get at. I'll put some extra bits and pieces up in other videos. So let's clear that. On a per user basis, it's probably best just to go back to you dot SSH, you could do this in SSH underscore config in slash etc slash SSH. But I'm going to do this on a per user, so what I'm going to do here is create a config file. So just looking in here, if we do ls minus al, we've got our keys. Um, we're actually here on the client. So I'm going to create a, a config file, so I'm going to do that using nano. We do it locally, it's fine. Um, nano config and then, then what we'll do in here is we'll set that up with the appropriate sort of uh, config for a particular host. So I'm going to call this host um, Ray. So I'm just putting um, a tab in here between the elements so, and then against that we've got a host name as part of it so the host name is going to be the remote machine. Of course if I was using DNS I could put a host name in here so that's fine, that's good. So, you know, a couple more things that we'd like to see in there, including the actual user that we want to engage with. And again, that's that's Ray in lowercase. The port number, uh, that's a variable, so I'll set that in here. Port all the twos, two, 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 uh, so four twos um, in there which matches of course what we've got listening to at the other end. I've got a cipher, I extracted this in fact by looking at the the exchanges in the, uh, the key in it that takes place right at the start so it, where we actually tell you which ciphers we've got. So I found the advanced encryption standard 256 uh, gcm at open ssh.com so that should be good. Uh, and then we'll do the identity file, which is essentially pointing to the key. And I'll give it a full path to that. Oops, put the dot after that, because it's going to go before the SSH. And it's the ID underscore RSA. Uh, that should do, I think. That should, that should do. So Control X and get out of there. Now, if we do uh, an SSH to Ray which is essentially in that config file against that name, so the host, uh, and that should establish the connection. 
all being well. So if we do a who minus al, if we do a, um, a service SSH status, we'll put a pseudo in front of that just to make sure. And away we go. So we can see that connection is in and in play. So we've accepted the public key for Ray. That's fine. OK, so that's good. Uh, come out of there, so that's just a control Z. Um, and we're in. We're, we're actually at the other end of the uh, other end of this connection. So again, if we do a, we we'll just do an IP address. We can see that the IP addresses for the other end are in play here. So we're looking at two, three, three as the IP address. Good. Okay. So we're we're happy to play around on to the end. TTY. Yes, we're at number eighteen. U minus AL. Remember, reveals that eighteen is in fact us. Okay. So that's the connection that we have in play. So there we go. I will see you again.